Hi there guys, I'm Danny, and welcome to this episode of All Monsters Go To Space. Today I'm bringing you a little video on the Nisa, a Nordic being that has a few different names depending on which country in the Nordic region it comes from. In Denmark and Norway, they're Nisa, Tomte in Sweden, and Tontu or Tomtenisa in Finland. From what I've been able to find out, they are normally always male and are said to be small and short with a long white beard, a very aged face that is yellowed and was, in general, quite a hairy little fellow. He would wear plain farmer's clothes consisting of breeches, a tunic, a belt, stockings and a red knitted cap, although in some versions this is a red conical cap, sort of more akin to a garden gnome figure. So these creatures are actually really quite small. Reports range from about 2 to 3 foot approximately, although there have been some versions where they're about half the height of an average man, and there are even a few accounts that say that they can change their size and become larger than a man. Now in newer retellings within Denmark, they've actually lost their beard and just become little clean-shaven men in red woolen stockings and still wearing the red cap. In all versions, from what I've been able to tell, they're all said to be very strong for their size, and some have quite a poisonous bite that unfortunately can only be cured magically. And in a very, very few tales I've come across, they only have four fingers, cat-like glowing eyes, and ears that are pointed like an elf. In some tales and visual depictions, he will actually have a cat, a goat, or even a pig companion, but I'll come to that a little bit later on in the video. Now these creatures were said to have come from the forests and moved into the houses and barns of farmsteads, and they took it upon themselves to act as their guardians, but only if certain conditions were continuously met. In turn for this continuous payment, they would help with the work that needed to be done on the farm with the growth of the crops and the caring for the animals. The Nisa became so connected to farms that it said he even has a most prized animal, the horse, and if you wanted to know which one belonged to him, you would just have to look for the most well looked after horse with a braided mane and a tail, and woe betide anyone who undid this. This being was very easily upset. If something had been spilled, a warning had to be shouted down to him, and if the Nisa found an animal had been mistreated or the farm work had been neglected, or that farmers were using the barn as a bathroom or swearing, the Nisa would take his revenge. Now this could take many forms of varying severity, from a clip round the ear, to pranks, to killing of livestock, which seems a tad extreme and kind of goes against his being the guardian, but they can be quite fickle creatures. And these creatures did not like change either, and as I've said before, they would often require payment for their continued patronage. Now it wasn't a financial gain that they wanted, but food. A farmer was required to leave a bowl of porridge out for him, and it had to have a pat of butter on top, very specific. If not, his ire was stirred. There's even a tale of a farmer who put the butter in the bowl first and then the porridge. Now this really angered their Nisa, so much so that he actually slaughtered the farmer's cow. Now doing this really worked up an appetite, and so he went back and ate the porridge and found the butter at the bottom. So to make up for what he had done, he searched high and low all over for a cow that looked exactly the same. I kind of feel sorry for the farmer whose cow was then taken, but that's how the story goes. Now another custom to appease the Nisa was to make up a bed for him on Christmas Eve and give him a place at the table, preferably the most honoured place. Now when Christianity became widespread, these beings became ever so slightly vilified. It became believed by some that if a farm was prospering more than their neighbours, it was because they had a Nisa, and so the people, the farmers, were no longer doing the Lord's work, although this might seem a little bit like sour grapes from the other farmers to me. Now the reason why I'm doing this video at this particular time of year is because the Nisa has become associated with Christmas. On Christmas cards, he is sometimes depicted alongside a cat, as I've mentioned before, or with the Yule Goat, the Julebok, or a pig in Scandinavia, and it's why a place is set for him specifically on the night before Christmas. Now at this time of year, he works like a tiny little Father Christmas. Instead of breaking and entering when people are sleeping and coming down the chimney, he knocks on the door and hands over the gifts to each recipient, of which I personally would prefer this method. There's also no mention of a naughty list or him always watching you. 
And also, much like how in the late 1870s, Thomas Nast made an illustration for a poem in Harper's Weekly of Twas the Night Before Christmas, where Father Christmas first donned the infamous red suit and was seen as a jolly fat man, we can contribute the most famous depiction of Anissa to Jenny Nystrom in 1881. She did an illustration for a Swedish magazine, and you'll have to excuse my pronunciation, Ni Illustrerad Tidning, of the poem Tomten, written by Victor Rydberg. Here he has the long white beard, the red conical knitted cap, a friendly demeanour, and is seen making or at least wrapping the presents. Their tunics are also brighter colours, and their cheeks are quite rosy. And I do have to wonder, though, if the 1870s image of Father Christmas had reached Sweden by this point and influenced her slightly, or if her idea came to her separately. Or maybe Thomas Nast was influenced by the stories of the Nisa and the stunning red colour that seems to have become synonymous with this seasonal period. You'll have to let me know what you think on that one. Well, that's all for this little video. I hope you enjoyed it. If so, please leave a like, subscribe and hit the notification bell, and have a good seasonal period whatever you celebrate. And I'll see you next time in the comments section and on Twitter. Bye!